Today I'm behind the 335i. I'm looking up at the um, underbelly here. This is uh, right behind the left tire, left rear tire. And um, this panel I needed to, to remove. Uh, I'm going to be uh, diagnosing and trying to fix whatever's wrong with my um, charcoal canister, which is located right up here underneath this uh, piece of plastic. So uh, there are some 8 millimeter screws. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven that I've removed. Uh, there's one more that's up here in this deep. Is it? You need a real long socket to get up in there, and there's one more. Okay, once you remove that piece of plastic, you'll see the charcoal canister right above it. Um, I'm gonna take this off. There's two 10 millimeter bolts right here and uh, there's a bunch of hoses on the front side along with an electrical connection that's attached to uh, this unit right here. Um, before I do that I kind of want to explain how I think this works. Alright so a little bit of uh, a breakdown of how this works. Uh, here is the exit and the inlet actually. This, is, this just goes out to atmosphere uh, there is a filter on the end of this tube. Um, it goes up and then underneath the car. Uh, I can't see, when I get underneath there, I can't see where the end of it is. Um, but it's somewhere up underneath this uh, shielding, somewhere in the middle of the car, I think. Um, so that's the exit, which is a, a vent, and it also is an inlet. So when the um, system is pulling vacuum from this one right here is attached to uh, the intake in the engine bay and so that'll pull a little bit of vacuum and then it sucks the air that's inside the canister that hydrocarbon enriched air that's uh, burnable um, and in order to do that it needs to have some way to get air in or else it would just be a vacuum against a, a solid plastic housing and it wouldn't wouldn't do anything so this vent up here goes out to atmosphere and allows air to be drawn in and then draws air through the charcoal in here and then picks up the hydrocarbons into the engine bay into the inlet or the intake and then gets burnt in the engine uh, this is the inlet from the uh, tank so there's a, a line one of these lines comes from the uh, the tank so your fuel tank and another line here that tees off comes from I, I don't know which was which but one of them goes to the, um, the fuel filler and that's a vent for the fuel filler so this vent up here that needs to be a vent and a uh, inlet when you're filling up the car, obviously, it, the gas has to have somewhere to go. So it goes through the activated charcoal, goes up, gets scrubbed, kind of cleaned out, cleaned out. And um, then it goes through this vent and through a small filter, just an air filter. Um, and it goes to the outside, it goes to um, atmosphere. Um, and then also it does uh, it draws air in another time it draws air in when it performs the test so this is a, a diagnostics module this um, this module that's here attached in the back right here and so that thing is a diagnostics module and it will draw it in and uh, figure out if there's a leak in the system once you remove those two 10 millimeter bolts, uh, you can, it will hang down here on, it's kind of hanging on these uh, vent lines up here. And so you just gotta remove those. And these are pressure, these are compression fittings. All right, so here's a better shot of those uh, valves. They all kind of look like this. Some of them are bigger than others, but you gotta squeeze on the sides here, the serrated sides. You squeeze on those and you can pull out um, these connections. 
Okay, once you take off the three fuel vapor hoses, there'll still be electrical connection right up there. And so you gotta just, uh, it's just a press in to release the toggle and then uh, pull that straight out. Nothing too much can be wrong with this. It's uh, just a canister with a couple chambers in it filled with activated charcoal. Um, what can happen is there are some filter membranes in there and so if those are uh, broken or uh, deteriorated then the charcoal can fall out so you just shake it and see if any charcoal falls out if it does then it probably needs to be replaced otherwise it should be good um, another thing you can do is uh, suck air from here and it should you should get air well you'll get air from both places but um, you should see a free flow of air. I'm gonna plug this hole up top, suck air through here, and um, I should get a vacuum here and it should it should uh, allow air to go through. Likewise, if I plug this hole and suck air through here, I should get air that gets sucked through here. And so that's the only way I'm gonna test it. I have a uh, tube over here, which is, I think, five eighths or so and it uh, just barely fits around this one or inside of this one and so I'm going to uh, shove it in there and then suck through the tube and then alternately plug these two holes to make sure air is flowing through the system and that's all I'm going to do to check this. Alright if you want to bench test your diagnostics module or DMTL then uh, you can hook up a uh, positive 12 volt to um, the far right pin as you're looking at it from behind um, with the with the vent to the left looking at it from behind um, it's the far right pin and actually that goes in the vehicle like this if you're looking from the back of the vehicle this is the top and you'd be looking at it like this with the vent would be at your left um, so if you hook up 12 volt positive to that then you can test out these other wires the one right next to the far right so the second from the right is the valve um, solenoid so you'll hear the valve click on and off or closed and open it'll click closed when you connect 12 volt uh, connect the circuit and then it'll open up open back up when you disconnect the circuit closed open closed open Also, if you blow into um, the end here, as you're connecting this, as you're closing this pump or closing this valve, you'll, you'll feel restriction. You won't be able to blow through it. And then um, you, once you release it and the valve opens, you'll be able to blow through it again. The one to the left of that should be the heater, um, but I haven't connected that one long enough to feel it heat up. And then the one all the way uh, to the left is uh, the pump. So you'll hear a small little pump running when you connect that one. All right, and here's the pump. Okay, installation is the reverse. So I'm gonna put this grommet in here. I put some uh, lithium grease on it just to lubricate it a little bit. And then you attach this valve. Okay, once you connect the uh, outlet here, then um, I don't know if I mentioned this when I took it apart, but there are three T20 Torx bits that hold it in place. So attach those and then you just feed it back up into the car and uh, attach the uh, three vacuum lines or the three uh, fuel vent lines and then attach the electrical connector 
back to the uh, pump. And that's it. All right, to get this back into place, the first thing I did was I connected this outlet that goes to the uh, engine bay, and then I connected the inlet from the gas tank, and then I put it up into place and loosely put these uh, two bolts in place, 10 millimeter. And then I connected the electrical connection up here and the uh, vent, which is right there. Make sure on these fittings that you squeeze to get off, that they snap and they go in the back into place, so you'll hear an audible snap. Okay, for this plastic piece, what you do is you, you kind of, here, I'll take it out again. You have it out of the car, you fill, fit it up at an angle like this, you move this piece in the uh, fender well out of the way, and then you twist it as you put it back in. there and make sure it goes back into place it should sit on top of both this metal over here and on top of the uh, plastic from the um, the fender or the rear bumper I should say okay once you're all done with that then um, you just reattach all the eight millimeter screws that you took off and that's it that's how you uh, remove diagnose and reinstall the uh, activated charcoal filter and leak bypass pump on a 335i. This is specifically a convertible model, uh, E93.